Hi, and welcome to another NERPG tutorial. In this tutorial video, we will be covering the NERPG questing system, including quest givers and quest turn-ins, quest dialogues, quest objectives, quest rewards, quest start items, chain quests, multi-step quests, repeatable quests, and finally, achievements. So, let's get started. For this tutorial, I will be using NERPG Engine version 0.15, which is a free download from nerpg.org slash downloads in Unity package format. You can also use NERPG Core version 0.15 or higher, which is a free download from the Unity Asset Store. If you want a quick guide to refer to later, you can look at docs.nerpg.org and find the quest section where everything that I will be covering is explained in the documentation. For this tutorial, I will be using the Features Demo Game, which you can find by going to Tools, NERPG, Welcome Window, and clicking on Features Demo Game. The Features Demo Game is found in the Project File System under NERPG Core Games Features Demo Game. The Features Demo Game is a useful example if you are trying to figure out how a specific feature in NERPG works or just want to see what features are available. Everything in it is designed to be simple and copy and pasteable, so if you find a piece of functionality that you like, you can look it up in the resources folder or in the scenes and then implement it in your project. Let's start with quest givers and quest turn-ins. If you're playing the feature demo game, in the center of town here, you will find an NPC with the name quest over his head who gives almost every quest in the game. Let's take a look at how you create a quest giver. To do that, we are going to go to the Unit Profile folder and we can find the Quest NPC unit. If you scroll down, you will find the inline interactable options and you'll see that he has one interactable option called Quest Giver Props. It contains a list of quests. If you look at the options, you can see Start Quest, End Quest, and Quest Name. If the Start Quest box is checked, that means that this Quest Giver will give you whatever this particular quest is in the Quest Name box. If the End Quest box is checked, then the Quest Giver will allow you to turn in whatever quest is available in the Quest Name box. If both of them are checked, then you can start the quest at this Quest Giver and turn in the same quest at that quest giver when it's complete. If we scroll down, we'll see that there is one box that only has the start quest checked and not the end quest checked with the quest name Use Interactable. Let's go find in the scene the place where we can actually turn in that quest. Over by the spawn arena, there is a character called the Spawn Characters NPC Unit Template. We can see that his unit profile name is Spawn Characters NPC. If we look in the unit profile folder and look at the Spawn Characters NPC unit, we can see that he also has a quest giver props, but he has only one element and that is to end the quest called Use Interactable. Next, let's look at dialogue introductions on quests. Quests can have a dialogue introduction where when you click on the quest, you have to complete a dialogue before you are actually allowed to accept the quest. Let's see how you'll set that up. In the quest folder, we find the dialogue introduction quest. You can see that this quest has no rewards and no objectives, which means that essentially the quest will automatically complete as soon as we accept it. It does have an opening dialogue, and in this case, the dialogue that will be used will be the dialogue that has the same name as the quest and you can see that in the tooltip here which is why there is no option for actually specifying the dialogue name. So the quest name is dialogue introduction so if we go into the dialogue folder and see the dialogue introduction dialogue and open that up then this is the text that we just saw displayed on the screen. As you can see, the dialogue introduction quest automatically completed as soon as we accepted it because it had no objectives, so we can just immediately turn it in. 
Next, let's look at repeatable quests. You can see a quest here, in fact a few quests here, that start with the word repeatable. Let's see how those are configured. If I look in the quest folder and look for repeatable quest, you can see that this quest has the repeatable quest box checked up here, and it has no rewards and no objectives, which means that like the previous quest, as soon as we accept it, we will be able to immediately turn it in. Let's do that. So I'll accept the repeatable quest, accept it, and you can see I can immediately turn it in. If I click on it and complete it, then once again it just appears back on the list right away because it is repeatable. Next, let's look at quest objectives. We'll start with the Use Interactable Objective. If we look at the Use Interactable Quest and scroll down, we can see that it has one step, and we'll cover multi-step quests later, and inside of that first step we have one objective, which is of type Use Interactable Objective. The interactable name is set to Spawn Characters. There's another box here called Require Completion, and this is for options such as the character creator or the name change, where you actually have to not only interact with the interactable, but complete the name change, or for example, save your character in order for that objective to be fulfilled. We can see that because the interactable name is spawn characters, we have to interact with an interactable called spawn characters. Let's see how that works. On the spawn characters NPC unit template over by the spawn arena, we can see that he has an interactable of type unit spawn controller interactable, and the interaction panel title is spawn characters. Because the name spawn characters matches, and this is a type of interactable option, then when we interact with it, the quest will automatically complete. Let's take a look at that now. First, I will accept the quest. Next, I will click on the spawn characters, and we can see that the objective is complete. Because this spawn characters NPC was able to turn in that quest, I can also turn in the quest here as well. Let's look at the next type of objective, the use ability objective. We can see a quest here called use ability. If we go to the Quests folder, we will see the Use Ability Quest, and if we scroll down, we will see that it has one step with one type of objective, which is an Ability Objective. The Ability name is set to Attack, and the Require Use box is checked. If the Require Use box wasn't checked, then we would only need to learn the ability, but because the Require Use box is checked, then we need to actually use the ability. Let's see how that works. First, I'll accept the quest, use ability, and the ability is use attack. You can see that the first ability on my action bar here is the attack ability. So if I right click on the warrior, then the auto attack you turns on. Nothing. And as soon as I attack him, the objective is complete. Next, let's look at the learn trade skill objective. We can see a quest here called Learn Trade Skill. If I look in the Quests folder, we'll see a Learn Trade Skill quest with one step and multiple quest objectives. We have Logging, Fishing, Mining, and Herbalism. To complete the quest, we will have to learn all of those trade skills, so let's see how that works. First, I'll learn Mining from the Mining Trainer. Next, I will learn Herbalism from the Herbalism Trainer. Next, I will learn Logging from the Logging Trainer. And finally, I will learn Fishing from the Fishing Trainer. And the quest is complete. Next, let's look at the Dialogue Objective. We can see here that there is a quest called Dialogue Objective. The difference between this quest and the one that had the dialogue introduction is that the dialogue objective act quest actually requires you to complete a separate dialogue. 
So if we look under Quest Objectives, we see one dialogue objective called the Speech Bubble Dialog. Let's take a look at that. First, I will accept the quest, then run over here to the Dialog NPC. How can I help you? And complete the Speech Bubble Dialog. You see that the quest doesn't complete immediately. It actually waits until the Speech Bubble Dialog is complete, and at the end of it, we finally get the quest completion. Next, let's look at the Quest Quest objective, which requires you to complete another quest before you can complete the current quest. So we can see there's a quest here called Finish Another Quest. If we look at it in the Quest folder, we see Finish Another Quest, and if we scroll down, we see one type of objective called the Quest Quest objective with the quest name of Collection. If you're wondering why it has such a silly name, it's actually because Quest Objective is the base class name of all Quest Objectives. So in order to have it have a separate name, it, we have to call it the Quest Quest Objective. Next, to finish the Quest Quest Objective, we need to finish a collection type of quest. So we can see a quest here called Collection. If we look in the Quest folder, we can see the Collection Quest and we can see that it has two objectives, both of which are collect objectives. The amount is set to one, and what that means is that we have to collect one medieval dagger, and we have to collect one medieval shield. You could use a partial match here if you wanted to say, ask a character to collect any medieval item, in which case you could just have the word medieval, and it would complete whether you collected a medieval dagger or a medieval shield. So let's go ahead and finish that, which will allow us to complete the other quest. So I will accept the collection quest. Then I'll go How over to the vendor here. I will scroll down until I find the medieval weapons. Then I will grab the medieval dagger and the medieval shield. Now you can see that this quest is complete. I'm going to turn in the collection quest. Now, because I've completed the collection quest, if I accept the finish another quest and hit accept, we can see that it's auto-completed because that other collection quest is already completed. And I can turn in this one as well. Next, let's look at the visit zone objective. We can see a quest here called visit zone. If I look in the quests folder, we can see the visit zone quest and we can see that it has the zone name of Features Demo Dungeon, and it is a Visit Zone objective. All I have to do to complete this quest is enter the Features Demo Dungeon, so I'll just open the door to the Features Demo Dungeon, walk through it, and you can see that as soon as we entered the Feature Demo Dungeon, this quest was completed automatically. There's another type of objective that I would like to cover called the Status Effect Objective. There aren't any quests in the Features Demo game for this yet, so let's go ahead and make one right now. We can go into the Quest folder, and I will call this the Status Effect Quest. So I'm going to right-click and choose Create, Any RPG, scroll down until I find Quest, and call it the Status Effect quest. For the resource name, we'll call it status effect. While I'm creating this quest, this is a good opportunity to look at the dynamic level capability. Right now, all the quests that we have looked at so far were dynamic level quests, meaning that the quest level automatically changes with the character. Let's uncheck that box and give this quest an experience level of 1. This means that the quest will be considered a level 1 quest rather than whatever the quest the or whatever level the character is. If I go down to objectives, we'll add one step. Then under quest objectives, we will add one objective and we can see the status effect objective here. Under the effect name, I'm going to choose the heal over time, because heal over time is the name of the status effect that I want put on the character in order to complete this quest. Next, we need to give this quest to the quest giver, so let's do that. We'll go into the unit profile folder, 
We'll scroll down until we find the quest NPC unit. We'll scroll down until we find his list of quests. We'll add another quest at the end. And we'll make sure he can start and end it. And now I'm looking at the status effect quest. Once I start the game, I can click on him and I see the status effect quest. We can also see that the color is green because this quest is no longer the same level as the character and quests that are the same level show up as yellow. The title is also green, so I can accept this quest. If I look in my quest log here, we can see that it's also green. Next, I'm going to cast the Heal Over Time spell, which will put the Heal Over Time status effect on me, which causes this quest to complete. Next, let's look at the kill objective. We can see a quest here called Kill Things. If I look in the quests folder and look for the Kill Things quest, if we scroll down, we can see that there are two kill objectives here, one enemy minion and one enemy boss. The amount one means I only have to kill the boss once, and the amount one means I only have to kill the enemy minion once. So let's go ahead and do that. The enemy boss and enemy minion can be found in the Features Demo Dungeon. So I will first run up to the enemy minion. Yeah. I'll use Ice Shards to blow him away. Yeah. And head over to the boss arena. Yeah. And use Ice Shards to blow him away because it's probably the cheapest ability in the game because you can just basically keep your opponent completely frozen otherwise this boss would really destroy me because he's actually quite tough and there we go I have completed the kill things quest next let's look at multi-step quests and how those work you can see that there is a repeatable two-step repeatable three-step and repeatable five-step quest let's go take a look at them if I look at the repeatable two-step quest you can see that under steps, instead of just one step like all of the other quests so far, we have two steps. The first one is to visit the Features Demo Dungeon, and the second one requires us to use the attack ability. Let's look at the repeatable three-step quest. This one requires us to collect the medieval dagger. Next, we have to use the Visit Zone objective and visit the Features Demo Dungeon and then use the attack ability. Finally, for the five-step quest, we basically have to do the previous same steps as in the other quests. We have to visit the Features Demo Dungeon. In this case, they're slightly different order. You have to collect a dagger and then also use the attack ability. And then finally, you have to kill one enemy minion and then kill a second enemy minion. So let's go ahead and get started on those quests. When you accept a quest that has multiple steps, you will only see the objectives for the current step. In this case, because I already have a medieval dagger in my bag, then I have automatically completed the steps that required me to collect a medieval dagger first, and all of these quests have proceeded to the Features Demo Dungeon objective. <laughs> By visiting the Features Demo Dungeon, those steps automatically completed and all of the quests advanced to the Use Attack Ability stage. <laughs> Let's go ahead and use the Attack Take Ability this. on this minion. <laughs> now you can see that two of these quests completed, but now I have to kill one enemy <laughs> minion, so I'll do that. And you can see that I have now advanced to step 5 of this repeatable 5-step quest, which now requires me to kill two enemy minions. Huh? So let's go ahead and do that. You don't stand a chance! That's one down. Huh? Take this! Yeah. And two down, and now you can see that all of these multi-step quests are complete. Next, let's look at quest start items. 
You don't always have to get a quest from a quest giver. You can pick up items along the way How that can, can start quests you? as well. I'm going to look on this vendor here and scroll down until I find the special items section and you'll see that there is a special item here called quest start. Let's right click on that and put it into my bag. Let's take a look at the quest start item in the resources folder. If I go to the item folder and go to consumable, you can find the quest start item. The quest start item is a type of item that you can create by choosing create any RPG. Look for items under inventory and quest start item. If we scroll down to the very bottom of it, we can see that this quest start item has one quest. The quest start item actually starts and ends the quests and the quest name is called Choose Reward. By ending the quest, this means that the quest start item does not require you to go to a specific quest giver to actually end the quest. If we look at the Choose Reward quest, you can see that it has Allow Raw Complete checked. What that means is that I can complete this quest without actually going to a quest giver. Next, let's look at quest rewards. For the Choose Reward quest, we can see that there are two item reward names, a Medieval Dagger and a Medieval Staff, but this box here that says Max Item Rewards is set to 1. What this means is that we will be forced to choose one or the other of these rewards in order to actually receive the reward. There are multiple types of rewards that you can get for completing a quest. You can obtain faction from completing a quest, you can learn new abilities, and you can learn new trade skills. If max faction rewards, max ability rewards, max skill rewards are set to zero, that means that the number of rewards is unlimited. You can also have currency for completing a quest, which you would get by filling in the currency name, as well as the base and currency reward per level. This allows the currency reward to scale with your level so that you're not, for example, getting like one copper for doing a quest at like level 50, for example. If you click on automatic currency reward, then the quest currency reward will scale based on the settings in the system configuration manager. So let's take a look at that. If I look at my game manager and scroll down to the scaling and you can see the quest currency scaling and the quest experience scaling, we can see that the quest currency name is gold and the quest currency amount per level is one. So if I turned on automatic currency scaling, then at level two, I would get two gold for completing this quest. Let's go ahead and use that item now and choose one of the rewards. I can right click on it. I'll choose the medieval staff. You can see that it lights up. Now I can't click the sword. If I click the staff again, then it's no longer highlighted and I can select the sword. If I attempt to hit complete, I'll get a warning right here. You must choose a reward. So I'll choose the staff, hit complete, and now I have a medieval staff as the reward. Next, let's cover chain quests. There aren't any chain quests in the features demo game, so we can make our own. So I'm going to right click in the quest folder, go to create, any RPG, scroll down till I find quest, and I'll call this one chain quest, or chain one quest. We'll give it a resource name of chain one. And basically, we're not going to give it any objectives. It's just going to be essentially an auto-completed quest. I'm just going to select that and choose Control D to duplicate it. And I will call this second one Chain 2 Quest. I'm going to change the name up here to Chain 2. Then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and go to Prerequisite Conditions. I'm going to open or click the plus sign and give this a prerequisite condition. Under quest prerequisites, I will give it one quest prerequisite and the prerequisite name is going to be chain one 
and I'm going to require that that is completed and also turned in. There's also a step index here. If the chain one quest was a multi-step quest, then I could just require that we complete, for example, step one or step two before this thing would be able to be turned in. But in this case, I'm just going to put step zero because there aren't any steps in that quest. So now I should be able to have this chain quest where I have quest one showing on the quest givers screen there. And once I complete quest one, then quest two will show up, but quest two will not be available or visible until I complete that first one. So let's go to the unit profile for the quest giver and just add both of these chain quests in there. So I will look for the quest NPC unit. Then I will add two more quests. So we'll set the total to 16 here. Scroll down to the bottom, open up this first quest and we'll choose chain one. Open up the second quest and we'll choose chain two. You can use this quest chaining by the prerequisites in order to basically make quest chains as long as you want. If you wanted a third one, you could create one, you know, called chain three and then set the prerequisite as having completed chain two first. Now that I've restarted the game, you can see that chain one is available. I'll accept chain one, then I can complete chain one, and now you see that chain two becomes available. This is a great way to make very long quest chains if you want to have like a main story quest for your game. Next, let's look at achievements. If I'm looking at the quest folder, there's a subfolder called achievement, and you can see that there's a quest called Learn All the Skills Quest. Achievements are exactly the same as quests. In fact, they're the exact same object type. It's just a quest scriptable object. The only difference is that they have the Is Achievement box checked. An achievement will be automatically accepted by your character, but invisible from your quest log, meaning that they are active at all times until you complete them. We can see for this particular achievement that we just have to learn herbalism, fishing, and mining, and the achievement will be complete. If I open up the quest log, you can see that I have 0 out of 25 quests in my logs. So let's go learn these three skills. First, I'll learn mining. Next, I'll learn herbalism. And finally, I'll learn fishing. And you can see that I just got an achievement. And if I click on the Achievements button, you can see that I now have the achievement for Learn All the Trade Skills. The final thing that I want to demonstrate is Shared Quest Giver Profiles. If we go to the Unit Profile folder and look at the Quest Unit Profile, then we can see the Quest Giver Profile names. A quest giver profile is useful if you want to have multiple NPCs have the same quests. For example, let's say that you have two different races in your game and they both start at different places, but you want them to have the same main story quest or some similar side quest. You can create a quest giver profile and add those two quests to it. Let's take a look at how that will work. If you don't already have a quest giver profile folder under your resources folder, then just right click and create and folder and call it quest giver profile. In the quest giver profile, right click, create, NERPG, and quest giver profile. I'm going to call this one main story quest. We'll set the resource name to main story quest, then go down to the quest list, add two quests, and I will add that chain quest. We'll allow him to both start and end it, so we'll choose quest name chain one and quest name chain two. Next, let's add this to some NPCs. The main quest giver already has it. So let's demonstrate this by, for example, adding it to the dialogue NPC unit. 
So if I scroll down to the dialog NPC unit, I'm going to add a second interactable option. This one is going to be a quest giver props. If I open that up, then I will go down to quest giver profile names and add the main story quest. I'm also going to add this to the vendor unit. So I'll go to the vendor NPC unit. I'll add a second inline interactable here. We'll set that to quest giver props and under quest giver profile names, I will also add the main story quest to the vendor. Finally, once the game is restarted, you can see that both the vendor and the dialogue NPC have exclamation marks over their head. How can I help you? And you can see that the vendor has chain one available. How can I help you? And the dialogue player has chain one available also. That's it for Quests 101. I certainly hope that you found that useful and that you enjoyed those tutorials. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.